Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life.
house on the lawn. But this time we ask that all cell phones need to be turned on silent or turned off. This time in the respect of the family. And we also like that everybody maintain their family.
much before we continue in our service that you please mask up. Please, please mask up. If you need a mask, raise your hands. Ushers, we need some masks down front for the family. Over 600 cases of corona is taken alive I, this I year in Jackson County. So we ask that if you don't want to protect yourself, protect others. the seas and establish it upon the throne, upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand on his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceit. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness of God and his salvation. I have read to you Psalms, the 24th chapter, verses 1 through 6. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing of his holy word. Our New Testament reading is found in John, the 14th chapter. And it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. My sisters and my brothers, weeping may endure for a night, but joy come in the morning. again that we come to this place, Father God, at a homegoing celebration, celebrating the life of Doris Robertson. Father, we come, your word says to give thanks in all things. Father, we thank you right now for the life of Doris Robertson. We thank you, Father, for the blessings she was to her family. Thank you for the blessing she was to a friend. Thank you, God, for every kind word that she has spoken. Thank you, Father, for every gentle smile. Thank you, Father, God, for every act of kindness. Father, we just thank you, Father, as we celebrate our home going, oh God. We bless your name because you had smiled down on her and given her a voice, oh God, that she could sing your praises. Thank you, O oh God, that she was acquainted with your dear son, Jesus. That she knew him from the free parting of her sins, O oh God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Father, as we come right now, we just come to celebrate this life, God. And Father, as we come, we also come asking for words of comfort. Father, we lift up this family right now, Lord God. We pray for this husband, O oh God, that will wake up in the days to come and see that chair, that bedside empty, God. We 
pray, Lord God, that your word will give him comfort, Father, in the weary hours of the night, oh God. They will give him comfort, Father, when he sit alone. Father, that your word will bring comfort to him throughout. Father, we lift him up and we pray for his family right now. God, we thank you for all those that have done those kind deeds for her. Thank you for his daughters that have ministered to her during her sickness, oh God. Father, we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that have, that will give comfort to them, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Father, we pray now and after these songs and after this program is over, oh God, that the visits and the calls will continue to bring comfort. Father, we pray that your spirit will guide this family. We pray, Father, that your spirit will bring this family closer together. Father, let this family have precious memories, memories, oh God, of your child. Father, we bless your name. And Father, we thank you for everything that you do. And it's always in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
the day you left and gained your wings, my heart just broke in two. I wish you could I wish you could have stayed with me when Kevin needed you. You left me with a memory and I love you dearly still. No matter how much time goes by, you know I always will. You were a very special person with kindness in your heart. And the love we had together grows strong and now we're apart. I know I cannot bring you back, although I wish you every day. For the peace of being with, with you the day you went away.
heaven is declared today to be a holiday. Because they have made a gain. Our loss. Bible says to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Let me say first of all to the Robson family, express my condolences. I apologize for not being there when you called, but uh, I was out of town when I received the message that we had two deaths. However, I was able to communicate since I've been back. So I was going off my condolences. Sister Robson was a, a jewel. She's a fine person. You can look around the congregation to see how much she was thought of. I'm not going to detain you long. I just want to share with you what the Lord has said laid on my heart for this occasion. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, and I'm going to read one verse, verse 14. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be find to find it. That's evident to me that there's life after death. See, which leadeth unto life. And I want to talk about the two gates and the two ways. The two gates and two ways. Now this scripture is part of the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus began preaching in the fifth chapter. In the seven chapters, the closing of it. And this 14th verse continues a metaphor of the 13th verse about the absence of following the wrong path. Here Jesus is telling us that there are only two ways to travel in life. In this life journey, you're either going to travel the right way or you're going to travel the wrong way. And those two ways can lead through the gate to heaven or the gate of hell. Now the most frightening thing is Jesus said that only few that find their way to heaven gate. A whole lot of church people are going to be disappointed. <laughs> A whole lot of Holy Ghost fear, speaking in tongues. Will be disappointed. In my 46 years of pastoring, I have officiated over, well over 200 funerals. But the frightening thing is, I don't know which gate they passed through. But I can say with the greatest confidence that Dyer's Robinson yes, is one of the few that pass through the heaven gate. You see, heaven gate is not a large gate like it is in field, where a large number just go through at a time. Heaven gate is not like that. But the gate to heaven is like a revolving door in a department store. Only one person can pass through at a time. And if you make an end, you can't get nobody in with you through that door. Before Sister Robinson yielded, she served over the cooking staff. 
She was a deaconess, financial secretary, and one of the lead singers in the choir. Amen. And not only that, but she was committed to her positions, faithful to the church, loyal to God and to her pastor, who had the rule of authority over. That's what a eulogy is. That I just mentioned giving commendations and tribute to a person for his or her contribution or service. But no matter what I say, she can't hear me. But I do believe she's in a place where she can hear the Lord. All right. All right. Hear him say, well done. Spooky. <laughs> Come on in. Where the wicked will cease from trouble. And the weary will be at rest. Now here in the text, Jesus said, enter by the narrow gate. In this statement, his ethical, uh, ethical teaching comes to the realm of application. He illustrates that every day we pilgrimage in this world. It is by the use of two gates and two ways. What he's doing is unfolding the truth. And there are two ways for us to choose the way, the righteous, of the way of the ungodly. Right. The choice is ours. Yeah. Now the world may say that there are three classes of people. The good, the bad, and the neutral. But the Bible says there are two classes. The saved and the unsaved. So we all are sinners. You've been baptized in accepted Christ in your life, you're still a sinner. Right. You're just a saved sinner. All right. All right. The difference is some of us uh, are saved, but we're still lost. We are either black or white. There is no gray. What I'm saying is if we are either in Christ or you will die, Christ. And if we travel either headed to we have either headed to heaven or we are headed to hell. All right, all right. Don't let nobody fool you. There's no purgatory. Roman Catholic teaches and believe that's their doctrine that there's a purgatory that you go there when you die if you're a sinner. You stay there until you get cleaned up. <laughs> then you go to heaven. In that case, there wouldn't be no need to worship the Lord. We could just live like we want. We know we're going to purpose there and we'll be cleaned up. We either on to hell or heaven. Let me tell you something. People will get mad at you. And tell you go to hell. <laughs> but because they tell you, that mean that you got to go. <laughs> but when T Jesus tells you to go, <laughs> Satan will be there standing there to greet you. <laughs> He'll be standing there. One way of knowing that you are going to hell, let me give you this briefly. Is when you walk off and leave the church and talk the church down. You can leave and go worship where you want to. But when you leave and talk the church down, that's blaspheme. Because Jesus said, Upon this rock I build my church. 
in the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So when you talk the church down, if that's blaspheme, you might as well go on to hell because there ain't no forgiveness when you blaspheme against God. Sister Robson used to sing a song, Everything good that happened to me, God did. Oh, she could sing it too. And that's an ideology that we all should digest. Because we didn't get here, and that's what we are by ourselves. What we are now and what we what we have is all because God did it. And just like God bless us, don't you know he can also unbless you? All he has to do is take his hands off of you. And Satan will play you like a checkerboard. Jesus tells us about the two gates. The straight gate and the wide gate. The wide gate is self-dependency and a proud spirit. You seen those folks like that? Oh, yeah. They got a quarter in their pocket, but they're proud. Their pride makes you think that they're a millionaire. So if the number, the name of the wide gate is self-dependency, then the name of the straight gate is Jesus. And everything moved by the power of the Lord. The journey we are traveling down here, it would determine the gate that we are in in when we die. And by the way, there's a 100% chance that you're going to die. <laughs> there are people that will tell you, family, not to grieve. Hold your head up. Life must go on. But they hadn't lost what you lost. I tell you that Sister Robinson is in a better place. Yes, she is in a better place than being here on earth. But her family is not better off because a major part has been taken away from her. And just like it takes time to heal from a major surgery, don't you know it takes time to heal from the loss of a loved one? The Bible tells us that as Christians, go ahead and grieve. But don't grieve like the world grieves. Because we got somebody to support and sustain us. Even God know what it is to grieve because he watched his only son be put to death because his son was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief but he died leaving us with consolement because he said blessed are those who mourn but they shall be comforted Death is always an intruder. And even when it's unexpected because no one knows the day now the hour that death would come. And when death comes, it always disrupts our lives, bringing us nothing but grief. No one welcomes death because it's a legacy of pain and emptiness and loneliness. But I want you to know that God has not abandoned you. Right. Even in the midst of your sorrows, God wants you to be spiritually strong and trust him he will provide all of your resources. And he does it through other people. Don't you say, I don't want so-and-so in my life. I don't like her. 
you don't know where your help gonna come from. God works to people. Ah, this morning I was sitting in Hardy, that hard, they couldn't go inside because they short of help. But I had me a couple of sausages and biscuits sitting in my car. And I always take the knife, cut the inside of the bread out. Simply because I'm, I'm a diabetic and I don't supposed to be eating that much bread. But after I cut it out, I threw it out the window. And when I threw it out the window before it can hit the ground, there were about five birds there. And the Lord spoke to my spirit and said, Smith, those birds didn't know where their meal was going to come from. But I use you to bless them. And that's the way it is in life. God uses somebody else to bless you. That's why the Bible said, be careful how you entertain strangers. You might entertain an angel on the way. Yes. Sister Robinson was kind to everybody. And she made sure in that kitchen Everybody ate. Some of you don't know, but when I got there ready to go, she's rare. She gave me a big old carry out. So I learned a long time ago that we are weak in our own strength. If we try to meet life's struggles and temptation on our own, we all need God. And each of us, because it uh, he always uses other people, as I stated before, to bring us a blessing. That's why he said, be careful how you entertain strangers. The Bible says it is appointed until a man wants to die. So if you are breathing now, it's a possibility that you're going to die before this century is out. But death is not the final chapter. You hear me? The Bible says straight is the gate and narrow is the way that lead it unto life. Think about that. Death is the way, the gate, straight way that lead it unto life. That tells me that life doesn't stop at the grave. But there is a life beyond the grave. Uh, that's why the songwriter say, uh, I got one more river to cross. I always like to use the analogy that life here on earth is a school for learning. And uh, you ought to learn something one day. But one thing about this school. Uh, you're going to graduate. No child left behind. Someone asked me what did Sister Robinson die from? And uh, that was a deceptive question. Because I'm not in the medical field. Come on here now. I don't know what she died from. But I know what she died with. And that is the name of Jesus. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. What she died from is not significant, but what she died with is no gate for it. No. The Bible says she had to pass through gates. My Bible tells me that there are 12 gates, 3 gates in the south, 3 gates three gates in the east, three gates in the west, and the gates stop there. They tell me that.
said there are 12 angels, three angels standing by each gate to make sure your name is on rope. And since Doris Robinson died in Birmingham, she went in the South Gate. Yeah. <laughs> 
lead the way and give a donation. And I'm going to come back and direct you into giving. But let me ask you to maybe fellowship outside. It's sort of hot in here. I am. It's working, but uh, because of the number of people. So please remain seated rather than shaking their hand or fellowship.
everybody else. I want everybody on my right, which is your left, with the, with the exception of the first and second people to stand. Those of you that seated on my right, which is your left, everyone except the ones on the first and second people. You be led to the altar.
go now to prepare a place for you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.